Welcome to Chair Yoga. I'm Michelle Ray Sobe, and I'm here to guide you through this lesson. One reason why I've decided that I would like to offer chair yoga in this environment is I see a growing demand for people that would like to offer chair yoga in their office setting for their employees. Some of the benefits of doing so inc includes stress reduction, um, stress management techniques, breathing techniques and presence for your team. So for this reason, we're going to be guiding through some common postures seen in chair yoga, along with some appropriate outfits that we might find when we arrive in the office. For some of you, you may be going into an office setting and for others, they may be zooming to the employees that are in their chairs at home. Either way, we want to present this training in a way where we're assuming that there's a desk in front of us and under that assumption that we have a chair to work with and a sturdy surface beneath our feet. So the first thing that I'd like to ask you to do is make sure that you have a nice sturdy chair. So I'm sitting in a nice sturdy chair that does not fold. So there's no worries of that. It's nice sturdy construct, um, has dependable um, footers on the feet. Move it, shake it, not going anywhere. Nice strong chair. Um, there are there are some postures you'll see out there where you see folks, you know, putting limbs through holes of chairs. I do not advise this. I don't know that the benefits outweigh the risks, although it could be a clever, crafty way of doing it. So thing one is find a nice sturdy chair. And thing two is find a nice sturdy surface to put it on. Uh, I do recommend it a, either a carpeting, office carpet is ideal for this, but if you have hardwood floors or tile floors or anything like that, you're gonna want a nice grippy, strong, solid mat. This is not really the time to go for the thick foamy ones um, or the Pilates mats or anything like that. We want a, a nice solid mat so that our chair stays put. So first things first is getting our chair on our mat making sure that it just does not move. And so, in order to help guide you through this lesson, we're going to be using our manual from our Yoga Alliance program. So our first posture that we have is called Warrior One. And chances are you've already heard about that one. So with that, what we're gonna wanna do is bring our arms up overhead. So the natural tendency is to reach, reach, reach those fingertips really tall and maybe not pay attention to what the hands are doing, but we do want to. We want the palms facing one another and we want our shoulders to come back and down nice and natural. We wanna open up our chest for our warrior one posture. Notice in this posture, my shoulders and my hips are facing forward, which would be different than if I open it up into a warrior two, reaching my fingertips back right? So at this point, if I were standing, my pelvis would turn to the side, but because I'm sitting, it's actually my lumbar spine to take the movement. So because of that, we're going to reach up into warrior one and then invite the hands back to center. Well, let's break it down. As we move from warrior one to warrior two, we're going from the hips facing forward to the hips facing the side. As I demonstrated to you, that doesn't really happen when you're sitting in a chair. What does happen is the lumbar spine twists. So one, we really don't want to introduce twists into our sequencing until the body is nice and warm. And two, I don't know that that would be the best sequencing sitting in a chair. So in this way, we're gonna take the warrior two out and maybe introduce it in another way. But right now, just starting off with our warrior one. So I hope that laying the groundwork for how your body moves when sitting in a chair versus how your body moves when standing on a mat definitely varies. And in this way, at some point, we'll also take the chair away and we'll demonstrate the same sequence on the bar. And you can kind of see the difference of what you can do in a chair versus what you can do on a bar. So assuming that you are teaching to practitioners that have a, a desk that they're holding on to, that could be treated as a bar, depending on its height and so on, always being mindful of the posture that the practitioners are in. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we're offering a uh, sequencing that's available and the benefits outweigh the risks. So anytime we move, if we go outside and we walk down the street, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a layer of risk there, whenever that might 
Anytime we leave the house, there's some risk. But we do wanna make sure that the benefits outweigh the risks. And in this way, chair yoga, I think, really does. Uh, some of the benefits of this posture for warrior one is we bring our arms up and we bring our shoulders down and our hands face one another nice and strong. We're relaxing through the traps here, this, this neck area, and also our rhomboids, which are situated at the base of our neck just behind, right? And we're stretching out our lats and we're opening up our chest. And we're finding movement, mobility in our shoulder girdle. So let's play around with some shoulder rolls, shall we? So if we were to start our class off with some nice shoulder rolls, right? And invite our practitioners to look forward and roll those shoulders nice and big, bringing in that breath, inhaling and exhaling as you come round, and then exhaling the other way through, inhaling and exhaling. What we're doing here is we're warming up the synovial joints. These are the joint, these are the sockets that the joints sit inside, and we have synovial fluid there, and that just helps lubricate the environment to encourage movement with ease and warm up our connective tissue to prepare for the movement that we have ahead. So if we have our arms up overhead right out of the gate, then we might not benefit as much as if we started off with some nice yummy shoulder rolls, right? So finding some presence here, adding in a layer of breath, inhaling and exhaling, nice and smooth, inhaling and exhaling, getting those shoulder rolls, finding that movement and then maybe slowly floating those arms up overhead. Can we allow the shoulders come back and down, the palms to face one another, soft and easy. And when done, invite the hands to prayer or on the lap wherever it feels comfortable. So let's talk about what's happening on with the lower part of my body. So I'm actively taking my feet and pressing them into the ground, earthbound, right? While I'm doing that and inviting the arches of the feet to lift up and in so doing, all of the muscles, all the intricate muscles and connective tissue on the top of the feet are having a chance to get a nice engagement. So strong feet are really helpful in you know, productive movement and reduces the chance of falling and things along these lines. So we wanna be mindful that any movement begins at our feet and moves up, even if we're teaching chair yoga. So in this way, we might wanna start our practitioners off, you know, at prayer, right? But then again, in a corporate setting, we might not. So we wanna be sensitive to the different dynamics and the different audiences we have in a corporate setting that we might be accustomed to teaching in person in the studio. So being mindful of those things, right? So I myself am not going to start off in prayer. I'm going to start off with my hands on my thighs because I think that that's a pretty easy go-to. You can just invite your practitioners to rest their hands on their thighs and maybe just take a few nice big shoulder rolls gazing forward, inhaling and exhaling, feeling that breath from here, let's still those shoulder rolls. Can we open up the chest? Can we soften through the shoulders and drop our elbows? Can we imagine as if the soles of the feet are on the ground, rooting to the earth beneath, finding that connectedness there as we do? Can we sit a little taller in our chair, but be mindful of the curves of our, of our spine? So we're not looking to sit rimrod straight. We're not looking to straighten our spine out. Our spine has these beautiful natural curves that we were born with. And we want to make sure that we honor the natural curves of our body by not hyperextending our spine too much. So let's just find a lengthening through our spine where we have some space in between each vertebra and a place to inhale nice and deeply by opening up the chest. So let's return now that our spine is nice and straight and our crown is reaching towards the sky, the tops of our head, our crown, imagine a little crown atop the head and reaching towards the sky. 
Hands are on the thighs and soles of feet reach to the mat, down, down, down. And the soles are gripping and the toes are open. Now your practitioners might have shoes on and they might not have shoes on. So for this lesson, I have shoes on under the assumption that we're in a corporate setting and people perhaps don't want to take off their shoes. If, however, your peeps have high heels on or anything like that, I'd highly encourage them to remove those as that greatly impacts some of the movements that we have, even if in a chair. At the end of the day, each practitioner gets to choose what they're comfortable with. So if they want to leave on their high heels and we're sitting in a chair, then maybe just add in some extra caution and be mindful of how you go about presenting this class. So when we put together our sequencing, we want to assume that maybe some of the people will take their shoes off and some of the people will not take their shoes off and that the way we present this shouldn't really matter either way. So considering that, the soles of the feet reach towards the ground, whether you have your shoes or not, we can subtly imply, hey, feel free to take your shoes off. As our, if the soles of our feet reach to the ground, feel the arches lift up from the feet. Feel that engagement as you do. Feel the muscles at the tops of the feet begin to engage and strengthen all those intricate little muscles. We have so much happening in the feet. From there, can we imagine as though we're engaging the thighs like we have a squishy ball in between the thighs and we're pressing it, but there's still space between our knees, right? So maybe you can bring your hands together and place them right between the knees. And could you imagine that the knees are pressing in towards the hands while we're keeping this lengthening of the spine? All the while keeping that engagement of the soles of feet to the earth connected with our feet nice and open, our toes spread and wide with the arches of our feet lifted and lengthened. Can we find that space? So what we might commonly see is people tending to bring the knees together and we don't want to have that happen. We would like the knees to have some space apart. If we were in a yoga studio, this might be a time where we go out and we pass out the squishy balls that we have for this. But then again, that might not be available to you or your setting or your practitioners may not want them. And so we wanna teach in a way where we can visualize the item without needing its physical presence, right? Because we can just do more with our minds than any physical prop that we might have or not have available to us. So we usually have our hands. So if we have our hands in between our knees, notice I didn't say in between the legs, I didn't say spread the legs or anything like that. Be mindful of language and word choice. So I'm bringing the hands between the knees, right? And I'm pressing those knees into the hands. Can I situate the elbows alongside the body and bring the shoulders back and down, finding the lengthening of the spine? Nice, soft, easy breath. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice, soft, easy breath. Can we find stillness here? So let's just stay here for a moment. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the nose or mouth, whatever you like. Some find there's more stress relief exhaling through the mouth, others through the nose. We do want to in through the nose though, because there's some filtration and warming systems there. Opening up through our chest, softening through our shoulders, pressing those knees towards the hands. Just finding simple stillness here. Can we find the base of the spine? Rooting into the chair and a lengthening through the spine and a softness of the neck. And maybe just little neck movements in any organic way that feels good to you. Let's just smooth through it. Maybe softly press the hands on the thighs once again, leaving the knees engaged where they were. The feet are alive and woke. And then maybe we just have some simple neck movements. You know, just really just getting in the habit to explore the different places that our neck can go. Can we breathe in there? Maybe even starting forward, lifting. Maybe our gaze to 12 o'clock, bringing our gaze round the clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and 12 o'clock, and back again. So because we're 
videoing this, presenting Zoom oftentimes, or even sitting opposite of your practitioners in the chair, we want to try and uh, find other language that replaces the left and right. So try and give that a little bit of consideration as to how you could go about doing that. I like the times of the clock. I feel like most folks can resonate with what three o'clock means to them and that's okay. So let's return to some nice big shoulder rolls in our class programming, shall we? Nice big shoulder rolls, right? And now how about, what would it look like if we opened up our chest and softened our shoulders and found our bellies, pull in or not suck in the belly, but rather snug the navel towards the spine, finding lengthening through the small of the back, but still keeping that natural curvature, our secondary curve there, keeping that there. And could we invite the belly towards the thighs, right? So it's not so much can we fold down? We're not actually looking to do that. We're just looking to hinge at the hips somewhat forward. A soft, easy breath. And just breathe here. And then nice big shoulder rolls. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's drop our fingertips down and just allow our arms to dangle and hang. So if there's anything in the way, let's just Move that for some simple arm circles here. Can we feel the arms release from the shoulders? Any tension that we may be holding in our upper back, through our neck, through our shoulders, right? These simple little circles. Now let's return our minds to our knees and our feet. Have we let go of the engagement there? And if so, could we return it back? Could we keep that going? Because in tandem with that, we'd have our core strength here, and our feet are grounded, our legs are nice and active. And you know, this is a really nice posture to increase the strength in between the thighs. The gracilis muscle there are commonly underdeveloped for most people, especially with the amount of sitting that we do. And one thing that happens is when we don't have symmetry of the muscles, either on the left or the right side, or maybe our, our front of our body is stronger, like our quadriceps are stronger than the back, our hamstrings are stronger or vice versa. Maybe the inner thighs are stronger than the outer thighs or vice versa. Usually the outer thighs are stronger than the inner thighs for most people, but never always everybody, right? You know this. So by, by targeting these specific muscle groups, it really helps distribute the weight of the body through movement or sitting or standing. And then because of that, lessens things like back pain that's caused from imbalanced muscle structure. So these are some things that we want to really bring mindfulness in. So when we gave our cue of bringing a stability ball in between the thighs there, the mindfulness there was to engage those muscles. And so we're pressing the stability ball in, right? Realistically, we probably don't want to actually try and get everyone to have stability ball in a corporate yoga setting. So try and keep those things in mind. So, okay, so now back to it. I think we had some arm swings going, yes? And our spine was nice and tall. And there's a space between our knees, but they still reach towards one another as though our hands were there for them to press into. And the soles of our feet are grounding to the earth, engaging all of the muscles at the top of the feet. Nice circles this way in that inhale and exhale. Nice big shoulder rolls. Can we drop our gaze down towards hands? And as we inhale up, Bring our gaze towards hands if it's comfortable to do so. Can we exhale, bring it back down? Beautiful, sweeping those arms. Inhale up, nice and deep breath. Exhale, bring it back down. Let's give that a no. Inhale up, nice deep breath. Exhale down. One more, just because it feels so good. Reaching that fresh, clean breath in. Exhale down. And maybe take some shoulder rolls once again. Now, some folks might automatically shoulder roll back and other folks might automatically shoulder roll forward. And that's okay. We're just going to allow it to be whatever it wants to be. But perhaps we can cue our practitioners to go from back and then just change directions from wherever they are. Maybe you just shake them out, let them go. Some simple circles, right? Just let those arms dangle and then change the direction do that too. 
Inhale in and exhale. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Beautiful. Let's return those hands again. Notice that I didn't tell them where to return the hands. I'm going to allow my practitioners to decide what's best for them. Naturally, I'm exhibiting that the hands are returning to the thighs. And so in an effort to be a little less wordy and also to empower our students based on what they want to do. For example, they might find this just feels so great and this is giving them a chance to release those traps and also to strengthen the muscles and the back of the body. So along our spine, we have muscles that run up and down. They're the erector spinae. They hold our body upright all day long, nice and strong. This is a passive movement of the muscle, not an active one. So this just basically happens for us. But when we bring attention towards it, we can sit a little stronger and we can bring the awareness and the focus there. And as we do, we might find a little less pressure on our spine and it's a softening through particularly the base of the neck. Tension headaches happening behind the base of the head and at the base of the spine. We also might bring some awareness by lengthening and straightening those muscles, not to hunch forward, right? So when we hunch forward all day long, we jet our neck forward. And I'm gonna shift my chair so that I can show that to you. When we hunch forward and do this, let's say here's my computer, like if you like my computer here, right? And our neck does this, it's jetting forward. So let's go ahead and unhinge so you can see that movement another way. The amount of space in between my chin and my chest is much smaller. And the amount of stress that's going to be happening on the, ch on the traps is gonna be much more intense, right? Over time, the rhomboids will stretch and lengthen into a kyphosis sort of shape, which we're not really encouraging that to be so extreme, right? We do want to honor the natural curvatures of the spine, and that might be the concave bit in the lower back and the natural primary curve of the mid, and then the rounding of the neck. So again, we don't want that rimrod straight, but we also do want to find that neutral spine. And knowing that neutral spine does not equate to rim rod straight. So let's keep that in mind when we're cueing our practitioners right out of their natural alignment into rim rod straight. So from here, if our practitioners could get in the habit of bringing their awareness of their elbows come to their side bodies while they sit nice and straight and invite the soles of their feet into the earth, and can we imagine that the knees are pressing towards each other with a space between and typing from this place, right? Assuming that they're typing on a keyboard, most of us do, so that's who this lesson is, is, is being made specifically for. This can really release the amount of pressure and tension that's on the upper body, including any rounding of the spine because you know, we're hunched over after hours like this, right? Including that, and really allows the other muscles of the body to begin to develop. And we're gonna talk about those muscles in this part one of our sequence. So through the pecs in the chest, we want to be able to include our arm and initiate our arm movement. So we have, we have these chest muscles, they're coming up, our arms can come up, they can lift. So let's go into this exercise, shall we? So shoulder rolls back, let's just loosey goosey a little bit. Still, we have that space between the knees as though they're pressing together, right? As though we had a stability ball there. Still, we have the soles of the feet actively engaging into the earth. And as we do, we should feel in the lumbar spine some strengthening core strength. So there's our shoulder rolls, right? Can we find that neutral place where if we were to look at ourselves from the side, our bony structure would be in alignment. That's what we're after. And then could we bring our arms forward, right? And then maybe overhead. So here we have just the tiniest little back bend starting to happen. Different movements of the spine is what we're after in chair yoga. Lifting, building that lengthening. Can you follow it? Softness through the shoulders and then bring that back down. Nice big shoulder rolls. Right? Like just those two simple things can really help our practitioners. 
I need that body alignment. Nice shoulder rolls forward again. Okay, let's bring it back. Let's imagine that our elbows are pinned to our side body and still our knees are pressing towards each other with a space between and still the soles of the feet ground into the earth and still the, the engagement of the core ripped all around, the core being all the way around, not just so much pulling in the belly like folks often think, but all the way around with the shoulders back and down. And then can we bring our hands forward, pinning those elbows alongside us? So when we're in this movement, our focal point will be stretching the hands. Can we bring the elbows to the side body and then open up the hands and stretch them nice and big. Stretch those hands, stretching those hands. And let's bring our awareness back to our breath. So keeping the elbows alongside the body and the hands nice and stretched. Finding that breath as you inhale through the nose. Let that breath travel, opening up through the chest, softening on the exhale. Keeping those hands out forward and out stretched. Can we reach our arms overhead, interlace the fingertips, thumb, point your finger to me. Can we allow the shoulders to come back and down? Can we still imagine as though those knees are pressing together with the space in between, still keeping the feet grounded to the earth? We're not going to let that go. Core is strong to protect the low back. And this might be exactly what your practitioners need. They might stay here or they might invite themselves into a soft back bend. Notice my ears fall alongside my arms. We have lengthening stretch here. Soft and easy. Inhale and exhale and slowly float those hands right on back down to the thighs. Notice I didn't prompt into prayer position for all the reasons you think I might not have, and that's okay. We want to make sure that we're teaching to the audience in front of us. And if we're walking into a corporate yoga scene, whether it be in person or virtually, we don't necessarily know what their beliefs are. So by staying away from any kind of language that may be exclusive rather than the inclusive class that we're trying to teach, it can go a long way to keep our practitioners feeling comfortable and engaged in their present body. So let's just take some nice big shoulder rolls, shall we? Just like returning to our class, nice big shoulder rolls. Oh my gosh, I love these ones, just massaging out the traps. Let's carry the arms along. Can we carry the arms along? And maybe on the change of the breath, we change direction. Whatever direction you were going before, let's just go the other direction now. Drop those fingertips down, gaze towards the hands. Can we inhale up, nice big rain bell arms. Exhale, bring it back down again. And again, inhaling up and exhaling down and inhaling up and exhaling down. Let's just shake that out, yeah? Keep the core nice and strong. Let's bring our hands back. Let's imagine once again, those knees are still pressing into each other, but there's a space between the soles of the feet and bite into the earth. Can we feel the arches lift up? And as we do, engage all of those muscles on the top of our feet. Can we wrap the calves and imagine as though we have a squishy ball in between the lower leg complex there. As we begin to strengthen the lower leg complex, we greatly reduce the chance of falling. So this is such a wonderful gift to a community, regardless of, of age groups or demographics. For the most part, most people that spend a good amount of time at a desk, the muscular structures of their knee below, known as the lower leg complex, is underdeveloped. And one of the downsides of that is rather than initiating movement throughout the day from the soles of the feet up through the body, lengthening through the crown, is then the quads, the tops of the thighs, tend to take on the majority of the work. When they become dominant and overly worked, what we then have is the back of the thighs, the hamstrings tend to shorten and weaken. And so this might be exhibited if you've tried to do a downward facing dog, it's, you know, your heels just don't wanna head in the direction towards the floor. It might be that that's your physical structure and that's okay, but it also might be that those hamstrings are tight and shortened for more sitting than standing and walking. 
right? So just consider these things along the way and understanding the anatomy behind the asana and why we ask our practitioners to move in the way that we ask them to move. So let's go through the movement of our spine, which is what we'll be touching on key points throughout this. Uh, on, on our warrior dance in our manual is reverse warrior. So what this is, is a side body stretch, okay? So since we've decided that we're going to remain seated in our chairs and we're not going to try and hybrid this class, maybe in future episodes we'll do that, but right now we're going to remain in our chairs. Can we find a side body stretch with reverse warrior? So nice big shoulder rolls, arms are down. Can we grip the bottom of the chair? So depending on your chair, you may or may not be able to do this, but I can. So if you can, I invite you to do so. Although there's a little screw or nut down there. So be careful, be mindful if you go that route, right? Otherwise, just allow your arms to fall alongside. So we're gonna allow one arm, and it doesn't matter which one, allow one arm to come down and the other to come up and over. So notice here, the main movement we have is a side body stretch here on the side body. It's called a lateral bend. And maybe if we want a little more from it, we can glance up towards our hand. And if that feels good for you, stay here. If it doesn't feel good for you, if you have any kind of tingling in your arm or anything like that, you might have something happening in your neck and your neck might not want to take the glance up. And I want you to know that that's okay. So nice big shoulder rolls, dropping those fingertips down, float one arm up, keeping grounded through the hips, down into the earth, reach and lengthen, feel that side body stretch. Maybe you decide to gaze up, maybe you guys forward, wherever feels good to you. The only thing I wanna have happen is make sure we're not collapsing in the side body here. Okay, so let's just make sure of that. If you want a little more from this because we are in chair yoga, maybe you have the opposite arm to me. Like we have a big stability deal ball in between our hands. And this will just add another layer to the movement. And that's if it feels good for your practitioners to do so. So let's bring everything right back to neutral. Notice this pattern. We're bringing everything back to neutral in chair yoga. We're not necessarily vinyasa flowing into postures from posture one to posture two to posture three and so on. Rather, we're bringing it back to neutral. And we'll go ahead and do the other side and then we'll talk about why we want to bring it back to neutral. So coming soon. Nice big shoulder rolls here. Release, find that lengthening. Can you imagine as though those knees are reaching towards each other with a space between the soles of feet are invited into the earth and the arches are lifted. Lock that other hand up and reach just to the other direction. Being mindful not to collapse in this side body and open up this stretch here. You might find you have a little bit of a twist going on. That's natural and going to be part of our bony structure and that's okay. Nobody's going to come completely flat up. Just move in a way that opens up your side body and reach those fingertips. Take a nice, soft, easy breath. Notice this arm just, just gets to hang out loosey-goosey and relax. Perhaps I glance up at that hand. Perhaps I reach my gaze forward. Perhaps I close my eyes. Whatever you like. Inhale and exhale. Reach, lift, 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 lengthen. And maybe even take a soft, easy back bend here. Back to center, returning the hand. Taking a nice, easy breath. Oh, roll those shoulders out, soft and easy. Roll those shoulders out, shake those arms out, right? Just allow the body to move lengthen through the spine and take a moment. So, okay, coming back to neutral, coming back to neutral, coming back to neutral. Uh, in, in yoga, in, in any style of yoga, this being chair yoga, I highly recommend bringing the pack practitioners to a neutral position with their spine before moving on to the next sequence. And the reason for it is it helps reduce the chance of injury. Nothing prevents injury completely. If we go outside and take a walk on the sidewalk as we talked about before, we could trip and fall and be injured. But we do want the benefits to outweigh the risks. So even though it feels so good to flow from one posture into the next, let's say during sun salutations, from that upward facing dog where we have that back to bend, and then we press back into our downward facing dog, into that forward fold, we have that flexion. 
I feel as though it's worth taking a neutral posture in between any movements of the spine to help protect it and also allow your practitioners just to find mindfulness and presence. So in order to do that, we can bring them back to neutral and just take a simple breath. So invite them to take a breath or invite them to take a sip of water and just break out of that student mode and just find presence yet again, right? Okay, so so far we've had an axial extension where we've lengthened our spine. We've come into a soft back bend hyperextension, right? And we've done a side bend, but we've not really done a fold. We started to do a fold in that we were in our axial extension, our spine was nice and straight, and our hands were on our thighs, and we started talking about bringing our hips forward. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we do, we're gonna invite our practitioners to make sure they scooch back in their chair, right? Because in the time that we've been moving, perhaps they scooch forward and we don't want anyone tipping forward on their chair. So these are the kinds of things that we want to give mind to and why we want to practice our sequence many, many times at home before we bring it into a corporate setting for responsible teaching practices. So let's get to it, shall we? So resting our hands, notice I didn't say where, resting our hands, taking a couple of shoulder rolls, inhale, exhale, soft and easy, drawing our sits bones down, lengthening through our spine, keeping those nice natural curves through the spine. Then we slide the hands down towards the knees and begin to round the spine as we invite the chin in towards our chest. So notice my thighs aren't moving and my center of gravity is not going to the edge of the chair but rather I'm just rounding the spine, finding that flexion. Can you move in a number of places, just a little bit, round and round, band and round, inviting our hands to the shins, round and round, chin to chest, inhaling and exhaling. Can we find presence here? Just observe what's going on with the body. How does this feel? Do you have any tightness or tension in the neck? Anything you wanna let go? We're gonna be here for three breaths, inviting the belly in, inhaling and exhaling. Taking these folds. Folds are so nice and grounding. So when the world seems as though it's spinning and moving so rapidly, just try and take a forward fold. Take it all a long way. So nice big shoulder rolls. Okay, so so far in our manual, we covered our warrior one seated. We covered our reverse warrior back. So we got our lateral bend there. We got a forward fold, which was like a seated cat, right? We took our back bend as we brought our arms up overhead. And we also could have reached behind us, although I caution against it, because depending on the width of their chair, I don't know, like this chair is ideal to, to come into a seated back bend and invite the, chair, the chin up and open up. Notice that the throat is open, opening up throat chakra, massaging the thyroid gland there located at the throat as I do. But that just so happens that this is a great chair for this posture. So if your chairs are about the same width as the base of the chairs, as is the feet, and not much, much wider, then that could be a nice option to take the back bend versus coming back as we had before, right? So let's talk about the movements of the spine. We have neutral, and we've really expressed that by inviting the knees to reach towards each other with a little space between the soles of the feet to invite towards the earth, grounding the roots down as we do. We've expressed that by lengthening up through the spine and keeping a softness in the neck, right? There was our neutral, right? And then we talked about coming into our back bend and we did that. And some key points were driving the sits bones down, opening up the space in the small back, softening through the pecs and chest and allowing the shoulders to come back and down. Now here's a playful one that you can add in. It's bending those elbows and inviting the thumbs to the back of the body. That's just delicious too for your practitioners if it feels good. This is such a nice stretch here and through the traps and so on. And really, uh, sorry, 
through the triceps and so on, softening the traps, I mean to say. This is such a nice stretch. And maybe even deepening that back bend just a smidge where you might find through that thoracic spine gets to stretch a little further than it normally might be able to. So that thoracic spine doesn't really get to go into much of a back bend expression based on the degrees that the spine allows movement through the different three parts of it, whether it be the cervical spine or the thoracic spine or the lumbar spine. The thoracic spine has the least degree of movement into a back bend. So little playful things like adding arms in can help your practitioners go further. So do keep in mind who your audience is and make sure we warmed the body up before we do any kind of back bends, which leads me into the conversation of twists. We want to twist the body it definitely helps us move in a way like we do this all day, right? We want to twist the body, but we want to make sure that we warm the body up first. So if we've taken the sequence that I've offered you today so far, and we've done it say three times, whether it's three times in a row, or we've done each posture three times in a row before progressing to the next, however it is you decide to do it will be entirely up to you before we take that twist. So as we move into the twist, we want to invite the practitioners to come to a nice, sturdy, neutral spine, right? We have those natural curves are there. We're not trying to take them out. We have the soles of the feet grounding into the earth. We're imagining though the knees are reaching towards one another with a little space between. We're gonna bring the arms up, 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 and to heart center and twist the body to one side. Feeling and lengthening, breathing deeply. And you just be here. Now, commonly we've seen in traditional yoga that we twist from right to left, we move from right to left, but, and there are some reasons for that. We will go into that as time goes by, but ultimately I feel that just having a nice neutral movement that's natural and easy for your practitioners to follow is just fine. So whether they go right or they go left can be up to them. Coming to center, invite the arms up, lift, lengthen, finding that neutral spine, bending at the elbows, invite the thumbs towards the upper back. Can you stay the elbows, reach towards the sky, stretching out those triceps, softening the traps, face in the neck as you do. Soft, easy breath, inhale, exhale, maybe even take a nice soft seated back bend as you do. Invite the hands back to heart center. Can you envision the palms of the hands reaching towards each other, one another, perhaps with a small space in between as we twist to the opposite side. Feeling a softness throughout, lengthening through the body, inhaling and exhaling, and perhaps if it feels good to you, gazing back just a little bit behind, taking on that fuller twist. And back to center. Let's just roll out those shoulders. Let's shake out any of that work that we've done. Nice big shoulder rolls back. Nice big shoulder rolls forward. Hands on the thighs. Soft seated back bend. Inhale deeply softness through the neck. Exhale round the spine. Tucking the body towards the back of the chair. Grounding the soles of the feet so that you stay nice and secure where you are. Inhaling and exhaling, can we drop those fingertips down and soften through the shoulders? Gaze come to the fingertips. As we inhale up, gaze follows hands. Inhale, nice big rainbow arms, and down again. And inhale up, and exhale down. One more time, inhale up, palms together. Come to heart, Sandra. Thank you so much for joining me for this short series of chair yoga today. I hope these tips serve you in your journey as being a yoga teacher, offering corporate yoga, whether it be in person or virtually, to many people out there that need it, or even for your own personal practice. Namaste.